Well, it's the final part of my third Canuxploitation a thon, and if you remember my last one, I ended by talking about the cult classic The Gate. A rare example of a PG-13 horror movie that still manages to be fun instead of lame, The Gate is a great movie for parents wanting to introduce their kids to horror that both can enjoy. While not exactly a giant hit, The Gate became a staple of video stores and ended up getting a cult following, so it was pretty much inevitable that it would get a sequel. Remember, in the 90s we got three Watchers sequels, and that was with barely anyone even seeing the first one. So in 1990 we got The Gate 2, or just Gate 2. I guess there wasn't enough in the budget for a the this time. Equaling the first movie's gonna be a tall order, but I have faith that this is probably not gonna do that. It is a 90s horror sequel, after all. I probably shouldn't be so cynical, though. After all, they actually got the director of the first movie to come back. You usually don't see that with horror movie sequels. Well, unless they're made by Victor Salva. Ugh. However, Steven Dorff wasn't available this time around, so instead our main character is Louis Tripp, coming back as his friend Terry. There it is. Glenn's old house. I've been staring at it for two solid years. Yeah, you can stop staring, Terry. Glenn's not coming back. He's too busy filming episodes of What a Dummy. And if anyone's wondering just what the hell that is... Are you nuts? How am I gonna produce a gourmet French meal, huh? Maybe you could steal Julia Child's personality this time. <laughs> Yeah, I could have just made the reference and moved on, but I really wanted to show a clip. Terry's planning on opening the gate again, because sure, that sounds like a great idea. The problem wasn't that we opened the gate, that we summoned the ancient demons. The problem was that we didn't do it right. No, I'm pretty sure opening a gateway to hell and unleashing demons was the problem. What, do you think if you do it again, the demons are going to be cool this time? Actually, that kind of is what he's hoping for. Apparently, opening the gate again is supposed to help his family. Dad, I'm, I know this is hard for you to understand, but I have to go back tonight. I'm doing it for us. For both of us. That's nice, son. Now do your dad a favor and crack me open another bottle of J&B before you leave, okay? Jeez, I see Glenn's family didn't bother to clean up before they moved. I guess their insurance didn't cover demon damage. Terry wants to reopen the gate so the demons can grant him a wish. Either that or he's trying to weird science himself a hot demon woman. Look, Terry, we don't mind you LARPing in abandoned buildings, but could you at least find some friends to do it with so you look like less of a weird loner? Before Terry's able to complete the ceremony, though, he's interrupted by some bullies from a Stephen King movie. Don't break the circle. You'll contaminate it. Oh, yeah, 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 you better be careful, John, or he might sick Satan on you. Uh, Satan, Pennywise, one of them's probably gonna kill you by the end. And hey, one of the bullies is played by Pamela Adlon. Oh, wait, my mistake, it's actually somebody named Pamela Seagal. Never mind. This isn't Satanism, this is something else, isn't it? Yeah, it's a kid with too much time on his hands and no game with girls. Although, I could be wrong about that last part. Yeah, it's demonology. Yeah, I knew it was something like that. The circle and, and the symbols. Right now, Terry's thinking, Whoa, I never thought this would impress chicks. All right, time to start the ceremony, and whoa, 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 just what do you think you're doing with that hamster, Terry? This movie's Canadian, not Italian. Terry can't bring himself to go through with it, though. Summoning the forces of darkness is one thing, but he can't kill Mr. Nibbles. You pussy! All right, you demons, let's see some action. <laughs> And after the ritual animal sacrifice, we say the magic words, Deodato D'Amato Lenzi! Uh-oh, looks like the demons don't appreciate animal cruelty either. And as punishment, they're banishing you to Utah. Look at that! Excuse me, but is this supposed to be happening? You're messing around with the forces of darkness, so... probably. Great, not only did they summon the raft monster from Creepshow 2, but they also brought back one of those little imp thingies from the first movie. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> wow, you mean you can just shoot them? Man, that would've been good to know last time. You can't just shoot them. <laughs> Don't you know what you're dealing with here, you asshole? <laughs> hey, you're the one trying to open a door to an evil demon dimension. I kind of think you're the asshole here, Terry. You almost got us killed. <laughs> It's you who's the asshole. Yeah, see? Exactly. Not only did John ruin Terry's ceremony, but he also made him look like a total bitch in front of Liz. Oh man, I sure hope they don't tell the other kids at school I own a silk wizard's cloak. 
This night wasn't a total bust, though. You now have proof that interdimensional demons exist. You present this to the scientific community and you'll be famous. Or, you know, you could just keep it in a jar in your basement. It's probably not the weirdest or smelliest thing down there. Even Terry's dad doesn't seem to mind all the weird shit he's into. Would you? Join a gang? Nah, just messing with demonic forces again. By the way, we're gonna need to get a new hamster. Terry hasn't been the same ever since his mom died and his dad lost his job as a pilot. Although something tells me that even if that didn't happen, he'd still be pickling monsters in his room. Even Terry's schoolwork is starting to suffer. Terrence? <laughs> Detention. What? I wasn't thinking about furry porn, I swear! The tension's not all bad, though. Now he gets to talk to Liz again. I told John he was an asshole for shooting the Manion. Minion. Say, so where'd he get a gun, anyway? His father's. Okay, so where does Dad get a gun? I mean, we are in Canada, after all. And again, considering Terry's the one who summoned the demon and John just reacted to it, I still think Terry's kind of the asshole here. John and Mo have the right idea. School's for suckers. Just get a job and start earning money. Also, do they work for the Quake Corporation? So what'd you wish for, man? What'd you wish for, a bigger dick? <laughs> There's a look that says, <laughs> yeah. Wishes of bullshit. How can a guy with a hole in his heart believe in wishes? I don't know, you saw a demon. Maybe wishes are real too. They may not believe in wishes, but demons are definitely real. This one even healed from its bullet wound. We got ourselves a mini Wolverine here. In other news, Terry's dad got a new job and cracked open a 36 pack to celebrate. Son, you're looking at Pan Atlantic's newest baggage expediter, and I start tomorrow. Mmm, baggage boy, huh? Alright, well, at least this means Terry's dad can't call him a loser anymore. Bad news, Terry. I think your little jar demon may have escaped. And that's not the only thing he has to worry about down here. <laughs> Someone stole the remote for his RC car! Alright, well, hint that this movie's Canadian by putting Terry in some hockey gear, but we're still gonna have an American flag in the background, okay? Even though according to IMDb this had a bigger budget than the first movie, I think that's probably inaccurate since the effects work here isn't as good as the original and we only get one minion as opposed to several of them like in the first movie. But having said that, the effects here are still pretty fun in an Evil Dead 2 kind of way. Even though Terry's kind of like if Ash was played by Eddie Deason instead of Bruce Campbell. Alright Terry, now you've got living proof demons exist. Time to tell the world, or at least your father. You're flying? <laughs> like a bird. Yeah, after that much booze, I'll bet you are. Okay, time to contact the local university about the demon, but first, gotta take some pics for social media. It's alive. A minion. What is he? If demons were rock stars, he'd be the roadie. So, you're saying she's gonna have to blow that thing if she wants to meet the Tommy Lee demon? All that negative energy, why mess around with something so dangerous? I need results. My regular acne medication isn't working and I'm hoping they can help. Okay, actually Terry's trying to open the gate again because his dad's been depressed and become an alcoholic ever since his mom died, and he's hoping he can use his wish to help turn his dad's life around. You know, Terry's mom being dead was only briefly touched on in the first movie and could have easily just been forgotten about, so it is kind of interesting that they decided to make it a major plot point here. Although I'm not sure if asking demons to help make your dad's life better is a smart idea. Maybe you should just use that monkey's paw you bought in Morocco. Or you could use your wishes for something more fun. No, really, they just wish for a new car and they instantly get it. This minion's like a mini genie. And the best part about the wishes, it really helps out Terry's game. Let's go to Paris tomorrow. Je t'aime, mon chéri. What's that mean? I love you, my darling. Right now, Terry's thinking, do I tell her about my collection of toenail clippings now or wait until later? Are you in love with John? I mean, have you ever... You know... Have you? Sure, who hasn't? Virgin! Terry's doing so well with Liz, he even manages to make John jealous. Turns out the bad boy's no match for somebody with unlimited demon wishes. Although they do come at a bit of a price. Even in your dream sequences, you still have to fly coach. Oh, and there may be other consequences. Dad! Hey, hey! Join the party! Jesus Christ, did Terry's dad go to the Denzel Washington flight school? Airline pilots are supposed to be on coke, not booze. Not to worry though, it was all just a dream. Although there is some other bad news. The car, and all the clothes and all the other stuff from last night, 
It all turned into shit. I mean, real shit. Tell me about it. You should see my room. I don't think that was because of the minion. I think Terry's basement was like that before. Terry is informed that his dad was involved in a crash and is now in a coma, which means now he has to take revenge by building a badass monster truck and... Oh, wait, sorry, that was the last movie I did. Terry really should have known something bad was gonna happen from that shit-eating grin the minion has on its face. Oh well, at least he still has Liz. Maybe. I saw you with that freak. What's his name? Look, you don't own me. He's just a friend, okay? I never touched him. He's a friend. Oh man, friend zoned again. Maybe I should have just wished for a real doll. Damn, it's true what they say. Chicks can't resist the bad boy slash probable villain. Well, at least this means John and Mo will leave Terry alone. <laughs> or not. You know, Terrence, I think it's time you and I became friends. We got so much in common. Same taste in girls, for example. Because friends should be able to share everything. <laughs> Wait, so you're saying it's cool if we share her? Shit, not only did John get Liz back, but he even stole Terry's minion. Oh well, at least they're nice enough to share their weed with it. Unfortunately, because the minion's from a negative dimension, that means weed is like crack to them. <laughs> Okay, again, even if the effects here aren't as good as in the first movie, I'm always a sucker for some stop motion, even if it's for a tiny crack demon. Stop the car! <laughs> okay, remember, man, we keep the little demon roadie hostage until he agrees to introduce us to the ultimate demon rock star, Blackie Lawless. Well, great, now that his demon's missing, Terry can't wish his dad out of his coma or himself out of the friend zone. Come on, you'll feel better. How come you know so much about it? Same thing happened to my dad. Your dad crashed a plane because of a demon wish too? Cancer. Oh, okay, so not quite the same thing. It doesn't matter what happens on the outside. Nothing can touch us where we really live. Not if someone loves you. The way I love you, Terry. Like a little brother. A completely platonic little brother. And it's that kind of totally non-sexual love that'll help get your dad through this. Now doesn't that make you feel better? It's okay to touch me too. Just remember, nothing past a handshake, okay friendo? Meanwhile, it looks like John and Mo were enjoying their wishes. See? They wished for bow tie so they could eat at this fancy restaurant. Unfortunately, demon wishes are kinda like doing steroids. There's some unwanted side effects, like crippling back knee. And hey, wait a second, that isn't Queen Elizabeth on those bills. Your money's no good here. Ugh. Okay, now it's really no good. When I wasn't kidding about the acne, John should have wished for some Clearasil. Terry better fix things before it's too late. The vessel will send him through the gate, straight back to hell. Oh, wait a minute. You're gonna do the conjure thing again? Call the demons? Sure, what's the worst that could happen? Oh, right. Okay, in order to reopen the gate, they're gonna need some magic ingredients. Hopefully this spell doesn't require some Eye of Newt. Terry's gone through enough pets already. A sacrifice of unbroken love. What is that? Oh, that's, um, something that represents love, you know, that comes from love. Comes from love, huh? Alright, get that sock from under your bed and put that in the box. Uh-oh, looks like things aren't going so well for John. I mean, he always thought he'd die by ODing in a bathroom, but he didn't think it'd go quite like this. Do not go in there! Woo! John's got the right idea, though. When your money's turned to shit, just dine and dash instead of paying. So is that spell almost ready? That's gonna save the world? Sure, why not? I mean, look at it this way. A couple of prayers and a dead hamster got us into this mess, right? That reminds me, we gotta stop at the pet store before we complete the spell. Before they can open the gate, Mo drops by and tells him John's gone to the warehouse where he works and they need to go find him. Mainly because that's the moodiest location they can use. Ah, boiler rooms. Where would 80s and 90s horror movies be without you? Oh shit, it's worse than I thought. By the looks of it, John's slowly turning into the Kool-Aid man. They better go find him quick. <laughs> Found him! Looks like I was wrong. John's actually been transformed into a denizen of the Harryhausen dimension. Oh well, he's not getting any complaints from me. You know, the way this factory's lit, I keep expecting Michael Keaton's Batman to pop in and drop one of them into a vat of chemicals. But I guess Mo could just save him the trouble and drop himself. Oh no. His heart. This is all my fault. You were the one who reopened the gate, so yeah, it kinda is.
Great, so Moe's dead and John's a demon. Great job, Terry. Terry theorizes that the demons are trying to enter our world by possessing human bodies rather than coming through the gate, and if they complete a human sacrifice, they'll be able to conquer our dimension. But luckily, Terry has a foolproof plan of stopping him. Oh my god! <laughs> They have to go back to the future? Just kidding. They go back to Glenn's house and try and send the demons back through the gate. They don't have a hamster to sacrifice this time, but they do still have the minion. This is for turning my car into shit, you little bastard. Now, why in the world would you want to do a thing like that? Hey, Moe's alive. And he brought more effects with him. The demons kidnap Liz, revealing she's the human sacrifice needed to fully conquer the human realm. But for a bit of good news, we finally learn Terry's last name is Chandler. Like I said before, the effects here aren't as impressive or memorable as in the first movie, but there are still some cool visuals in this finale. This part almost seems like a live-action version of a segment from the movie Heavy Metal. Terry could even pass for a real version of Den before he gets transformed. You can't do this! We didn't start this. You started it. Again, they are kind of right here, Terry. The demons want Terry to sacrifice Liz, but Terry shouldn't be upset. He's gone from simply role-playing Dungeons and Dragons to actually living it. You know, I'm starting to think that reopening the gate to the demon dimension just to get your dad to stop drinking may have been a bad idea. Oh well, at least it leads to more Randall William Cook effects. And he knows what he's doing. He worked on the Lord of the Rings films. Speaking of which, it kind of looks like Terry's been transformed into an extra from one of them. But just like with Mr. Nibbles earlier, Terry just can't bring himself to sacrifice Liz. He might still have a chance of getting to second base with her after this. Okay, so at the end of the first movie, Glenn defeated the head demon by hitting him with a rocket. So how is Terry going to defeat the main demon here? Oh no! Dagger to the face. Okay, not as spectacular as in the first movie, but I guess this kinda earns this movie's R rating as opposed to the first one's PG-13. Alright, you little shit. Time to use this music box to close the gate. At least until they decide to make another sequel. <laughs> So Terry manages to close the gate and send the demons back to their dimension, but at a terrible cost. Terry? Oh god. Ah, poor Terry. He died as he lived. Still stuck in the friend zone. There is a silver lining to all this, though. Terry's dad made it out of his coma in order to attend his funeral, so I guess Terry meddling with demonic forces had a bit of a positive effect. And after this tragedy, Terry's dad vowed never again to drink on the job before noon. But wait a second. Didn't you hear me? I couldn't breathe in there. Good work, Terry. Not only are you alive, but now it looks like you won't need that sock under your bed anymore. Oh, and the villains also survived, so, uh... Sequel hook? Of course, there weren't any more sequels, although Lewis Tripp did come back to play Terry again in a short film called Sacrifice, which is apparently Australian and also a musical? Okay, gotta admit I'm a little curious to see what that's like. A remake of the first film directed by none other than Alex Winter was also reportedly in development, although as of 2020, it still hasn't happened yet. Now make no mistake, The Gate 2 isn't nearly as good as the first one, but as far as lesser-known horror movie sequels go, it could have been worse. While not as impressive effects-wise as the original, the stop-motion stuff is still kind of fun. And I'll also give it points for trying to be a little different instead of just a rehash of the first one. But ultimately, there is a reason the first movie's remembered as a cult classic, and this one's considered... well just a sequel. Also, even though the first movie was rated PG-13 and this one's rated R, it feels weirdly tamer than the first one. This may be worth a watch for fans of the first one who are curious what the sequel's like, but again, the original remains one of the gold standards as far as horror flicks you can introduce your kids to. Well, there it is, the end of another Canuxploitation-a-thon. And now that it's over, I can get back to my regular schedule of people wondering when the next Godzilla video is. Until next time!
you got demons. 